Hey, check out our sponsor, MMAHQ.com. I only have a couple of um, matches I would really like to materialize, but in the meantime, by waiting for these matches to materialize, I can't just sit dormant because if you just train in the, in the practice room environment and you don't get step out into competition, you will really become apprehensive. So I still step out and take on matches, although the, some of them might not be in my best interest at times, while, while, while waiting for, for these other two to, to take place. Well, you, you mentioned two. Uh, one that I know that you wanted and I was hoping for was uh, Hoist Gracie down in Brazil. Uh, that that appears to not going to be happening. Well, I mean, well, a couple of folds. I mean, I, I knew when I, I expressed interest into it that the weight class New ruling alone would probably kill that one because Hoist weighs you know, around that 180, 185 pounds. I'm still waiting on that 250, 260 pound range, so that would probably kill it right off the get go there. But I thought, well, it, it would at least be marketable. I want to at least express my interest in doing something like that. The only other two matches would be it would be one more match with the Ken Shamrock and one more match with Mark Coleman. Ken and I we split. He won one, I won one. Uh, you got to have the rubber match and Mark Coleman. Again, that's just another one that where it's like I'd like to have just one more time inside that cage just to see what kind of outcome will come with it. Right. Uh, I'd love to see either one of those matches. Now, uh, you know, Ken Shamrock uh, it was active. You know, I mean, Mark has retired now. But have you had any discussions with these guys? Actually, you know, I spoke to both of them directly. I did not know when you're saying that Mark retired. I did not. I have not heard that he's retired because I spoke to... Uh, I'm trying to think when the last time I spoke to Mark, but I was actually, we, we was on a trip to Afghanistan first, and we spoke we spoke a couple more times since then, and he, he agreed to do a match, but it would have to be at a catch weight because Mark is now down to the 205 pound weight class. And he, he says, you gotta get your big old butt down to at least close to me right now. And he says, about 225, I go, Mark, I will be a rather mean and hungry person at 225, but I will agree to that. Right. You know what? Maybe I misspoke because, uh, you know, he he's, was out of the UFC and uh, he hadn't fought in a while. So I okay. guess, yeah, you know, maybe it's not officially retired, uh, but it would be a great match. So you think you're get, getting some headway with that? Well, I, I, have, I have gotten the headway with Mark in terms of that he's agreed to do a match. Uh, now I'm actually trying to farm it out to some promoters. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, as long as I, I know that, 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 that uh, these athletes are in agreement with this, now I'm trying to farm it out to some of these different promoters that actually can bring it together at a venue and do the marketing and stuff like that with it. And how about uh, Ken Shamrock? What was your discussion like with him? Well, basically the same thing with that, that uh, he's agreed to do the match. It just Now he's just trying to find a venue with it. So let's talk about that Shiner a little bit. Uh, you mentioned that before. That was from your last fight. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right now at 99 wins. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's a lot I'll, of fights. I'll say that that's what the internet has me at. I mean, it's, uh, you got to realize the sheer dog, the full contact fighter, these uh, websites didn't exist until like two, three, four years after the fact that of the UFC debut, and they only ever tracked the UFC. So I, I, I worked for when no hose bar broke, I was working for all kinds of companies at the point. Most of them are gone now. They're just history. And just a la last thing I just want to address. Now, you started in the no holes barred era. Yeah. Right now, a lot of rules, you know, rounds, everything like that. Uh, what do you like better? You've been, you know, fighting in both. Well, I mean, I, I guess I'll answer that twofold. Um, with the new rules that, are, that have come about, it is for the safety of the athletes. Um, it is also for to keep an, an entertainment product within a certain um, time frames. The hard part was being no holes barred, there was no time limits. And that's what happened when you said that that match got cut off. So they had allocated like two hours for pay-per-view and our match went beyond mm -hmm. a normal range. At that point, they had not seen a match go over four minutes. Mm -hmm. And here we go, just shy of 16 minutes or something like that. So that threw it out of whack. So it's for how much TV time that they had. There's for a lot of reasons what they need to do with this. I always make the one comment that if you were to change just one element, the element of time, out there, I think you'd see some different champions mm -hmm. taking place. Or if you took the same time, but knowing that if it's a three, five minutes, I have a 50 minute block. Right, right. But if you just have that whole, that, that time limit just going the entire time, I think again, you might see some different champions because if you take me down and you're putting on me and my corner yells out, you know, there's 20 seconds left, hang in there. 
hook or crook, I'm going to try to hang in there for that 15 or 20 seconds to know that the match ends. I go back to my corner. I get, uh, for one minute there, I, I'm being coached. I get water down, and now the match starts right back on their feet. Whereas if you had nothing but time to kill, you would have broke my competitive spirit, mm -hmm. and I would have been tapping out. Right. So there's, there's just certain things that if you change just that one element of time, you see some different champions that would be taking place. No, right now you have, uh, you know, Brock Lesnar was the champ, and now Cain Velasquez, uh, you know, wrestlers. Well, I mean, when you look at weight class by weight class, you know, here, we're here in the great state of Pennsylvania. It's very rich in wrestling history right now. The wrestlers are the kings of the takedowns, mm -hmm. but also some one of the susceptibilities, though, wrestlers tend to use their head as turning mechanisms, so they, they tend to be a little bit more susceptible to guillotine chokes. I myself fell, succumbed to, to that same uh, element. So, I mean, it's, uh, but the, the, the tenacious behavior of a wrestler. Wrestling, amateur wrestlers don't have a true profession to move on to. Mm -hmm. Seems like the MMA world is their niche. Right. All right. Well, sounds great. I won't take up any of your time. Uh, Dan the Beast Severn, thanks very much. Been a pleasure. Hey, check out our sponsor, MMAHQ.com. Daily deals, awesome products, but move fast. These deals are here today, gone tomorrow. Here's what you missed so far. Check them out, see what's on sale today.